So let's talk about a major problem with late model Cummins trucks. Right here, this little guy, part of the intake grid heater assembly. And what happens here is there's 200 amps of current running through this little bolt and this bus bar to heat up this intake assembly here. And over time, this bolt likes to dissipate, melt, rot off, whatever you want to call it. And then a large chunk can fall off, roll down your intake into one of the cylinders and completely damage your engine. If this little bolt falls off and rolls into your intake, down into one of the cylinders, you're gonna have a complete engine failure and a very large bill on your hands. So let's jump in and see what the components are of the BD kit. What we have here is a new and improved lower bus bar, which is quite thick. I'll just compare it to the original one. It can carry current load a lot more efficiently. This is the upper bus bar, which will replace this piece right here. And then we have some improved hardware, this M8 bolt, which can also handle a lot more current. And then finally, we remove the nuts by threading the bus bar here. So there's nothing to rot off and fall into the intake. We also have some insulated washers, a nylon bushing, a nylock nut to go on top of the um, cable for the grid heater, some specialty tools to aid in the disassembly and reassembly, and all gaskets required to do, complete this job. In order to complete the installation on 2007 through 2012 model year trucks, we will have to do a small modification to the intake plate. There's a bridge of aluminum that will need to be removed by cutting out carefully, as you can see here. 2013 through 2024 models will already have this area cleared out. As you can see, we've already removed the intake from the engine, so let's start with the disassembly of the bus bar. All the tools necessary to complete this job are listed in our installation manual. First, we're gonna take off this nut at where the lower and upper bus bar meet. We'll take our custom little wrench here and reach up underneath and try to secure it on this nut. And next, we'll use the little Torx bit that we supply to, to remove this nut. Now the lower bus bar can come off. There's an insulated washer we'll remove here. And oops, careful not to lose all your hardware. And we will need to save this little insulated bushing here. I got it here. And then there's an insulated washer on the opposite side here that goes against the heater element. We'll pull those out too. And lastly, we'll pop the insulated washer off here. And lastly, we'll put, pull out the upper bus bar by forcing it down here and then like so. Okay, we've removed all the components that we need to, but next, with this early model, we'll have to cut out this little aluminum bridge. We'll accomplish that by using a hacksaw. We'll want to cut right along the step line as closely as possible. And then again on this, following this edge of the other opposite side of the intake. Yeah. Should be through, yep, I think so. Yeah, there we go, we're through now. And then approximately right here, that'll be good. Nope. All right, now we'll pull that little piece out. We'll, yeah, we'll grab an air nozzle and we'll blow off the shavings. Okay, we're all ready to start reassembling with our new components. 
The idea here is the current that's gonna power your grid heater is gonna travel through this bus bar and then over to the actual heating element right here. So we want the current to flow through here, this bus bar, into our element. But we, we want to avoid is current contacting the rest of the intake plate, because that will cause a dead short. What we have to do here is orientate our isolation washers in the correct way to allow current to go into the heater element, but not transfer into this intake plate assembly. Next, we will reuse this insulated insert and put it through the through hole right here by the intake heater element. In the manual, like I said, we have a, a blown up view at, um, it's currently at the end of the manual. We're gonna bump that up to the front, just to make it a little bit easier. But uh, the insulating washers need to go on either side of the intake mounting point. Now if we move over to this intake plate, I'll show you right here. That is this guy right here. We need the insulating washers on either side of that. So when looking at your components, to tell the difference between insulating washers and a normal steel washer, we'll just show you side by side. A steel washer will be smooth and have a clear zinc coating, and the two insulating washers will have a bit of a texture to them, still a little bit silver in color, but they look like they're made out of a fiber material, which they are. First, we'll start off with an insulating washer and a steel washer. And we need to sandwich those between the grid heater element and the intake plate uh, mounting point here. We need the insulating washer to be touching the intake plate. We'll use a little screwdriver to help gain some clearance. So as you can see here, we have our steel washer touching our heater element and our insulating washer touching the intake uh, aluminum housing. Okay, next we'll take the other uh, insulating washer and our bolt, and we will put that washer on like this. And we'll come in from the back side, and we will sneak that through and we'll get it. Just adjust till the hole lines up. Boom, boom, boom. Like this. And as you can see, get my little screwdriver out again. Insulating washer, aluminum housing of your intake, insulating washer, then your steel washer, touching your grid heater element. Final step is the bus bar, which will come here on the other side of the element and get sandwiched, it's sandwiched it in between the bus bar and the steel washer. That'll allow the current to travel through the bus bar into the element, into this bolt, but not into the uh, aluminum intake housing. So again, just being a, a, a little bit more diligent here. Um, if this bus bar or this bolt contact any part of this aluminum intake when it's powered up, that will cause a short, that will melt things. So that's why we're being extra careful here. And we are gonna start this by hand. And, and just hand tight for now is great. So we can line everything up. Next, we'll take the new upper bus bar and it's got a little tab. We'll Tuck it in like this. We'll take the new M8 bolt and we will start it in here like this into the lower bus bar. And I'm gonna remount that because we're gonna wanna torque that. Take the M5 Allen socket. So we're gonna take our torque wrench and torque this M8 bolt to 15 foot-pounds. Cool. 
Okay, next we'll flip this back over and we'll need to torque the M6, which has thread locker applied to it already, to seven foot pounds. So this solves the problem by eliminating the nuts and the small hardware that can rot off and fall down into your intake. We've accomplished this by using an M8 bolt at the front of the bus bar into a thicker bus bar that can carry the high current load more efficiently. We've also connected directly to the grid heater elements instead of transferring all the load through the little M6 bolt. So all in all, the whole system is more efficient and this is a $200 solution to prevent a $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 engine job. You can now reinstall the intake assembly and sleep well knowing your engine will not inhale a grid heater nut. For more information on this and other great products, contact us at bddiesel.com.